Good morning everyone. Hey, this is Vaishali Siddhapan. Welcome to my channel which is Complemental Economics. And today's class, which is the fourth chapter I was doing, in the fourth chapter we have a question like what are the determinants of a supply firm's curve? It is not individual supply curve, I'm talking about firm's supply curve. What are the determinants we have in the supply curve? So before talking about firm's supply curve, let me talk about the exact individual law of supply, how it's going to work. So first of all, the law of supply that I'm going to talk about. So the law of supply, it is a positive in a relationship. The quantity supply is a function of price. When I'm talking about this equation, quantity supply is a function of price. The relationship between the variables, it is positive. If the relationship is positive, that means when price is going to increase, 1, 2, 3, 4, the quantity supply is also going to increase to 15, to 20, 30, 50. So here you can see the price is increasing at the same time the quantity supply is also increasing. If price is decreasing, quantity supply is also going to decrease. The simple reason behind it, the quantity supply is done by a producer. If the price is increasing, he thinks it's really uh, the kind of a risk what I'm bearing. So I really benefited with a lot of profit. So if, he's, if he is getting more profit only in that situation, so he likes to produce more. If he is not getting much of profit, he don't want to produce. So this way, the price is increasing. So he thinks that his profit ratio is also going to increase. So that's why he'll produce more. If price is decreasing, his profit ratio is going to decrease. So he doesn't feel like producing. So this is the way how the law of supply says when price increases, quantity supply is also going to increase. If price decreases, quantity supply is also going to decrease. The relationship between the two variables is definitely positive. So the relationship is the positive. The supply in one particular time, the whatever goods we are supplied, so in one limited price, in a particular time, in the particular price. If we are ready to supply, if you are giving any goods by the producer, that will be called as supply. So if the supply theory, if the supply, if it is represented in table, that will be called as supply schedule. See, this will be called as supply schedule. So um, what is the price and what is the quantity we are supplying? If we represent that through the table, that will be called as supply schedule. On the other side, supply curve. So the same schedule can be represented through the graph. You can see here you have x-axis and the y-axis. They both are, I mean the relationship between the curve it is positive. So we are moving upward. So the negative relationship we come down and if the theory is a positive relationship, the relationship between the variable, if it is possible, positive, so then we are going upward. So this way, this schedule, if you represent through the graph, then it will be called supply curve. So then you have, uh, in whenever we talk about cost, the marginal cost is exactly like the firm's supply curve. So that's why we say that the firm's supply curve represents the MC curve also. So in any of the diagram, if you are seeing this curve, this curve is also MC curve. At the same time, this curve is a marginal cost also. See, this will be the this will be the marginal cost and this will be the supply curve. They both come in the same line, so that's why we call it as the firm's supply curve is a part of MC curve also. So this is the MC curve, this particular curve, and this is the supply curve. So the firm's supply curve is part of marginal cost. In in any of the theory, if I have mentioned MC, that means it is also a supply theory. So now, after this we have a point, we have two determinants actually, which really, uh, you know, plays very uh, big impact on uh, determinants of the supply. The first one is technological progress. Whenever we talk about determinants of supply, so many determinants are there, so many things influences the supply, but 
right now we have taken only two important things. With that we have one more topic. Let me conclude that in the last. The first determinant, this is the first determinant. We have so many as I said, but right now, uh, according to the syllabus, the only two determinants they have given. The first one is technological progress. So just imagine we have we are using two factors of production. So one is like uh, labor, and the other one is the capital. Capital, otherwise you can take it as a land also. So just imagine we are using two factors of production. By using the two factors of production right now, you are producing 20 units. And if technology is upgraded, if technology is good, if you are using more technology, by using these kinds of factors of production, definitely the production is going to increase. So, if production increases by using these uh, factors of production, definitely the cost is going to reduce the cost of it it's going to reduce so this way technology progress is there if you every time any new technologies are right and you are updating your production upgrading your production process by any kind of a technology which is introduced so definitely your production is going to increase so right now by using land and labor if you are producing 20 units without much good technology so now after upgrading good technology with the help of labor and capital you will be producing 50 units instead of 20 units. So this way upgrading technology always reduces the cost. So at the same time it is going to increase the production. If technology is not good by using the same factors of production your production will be lesser. So definitely marginal cost will be very much more. So this is the first one technological progress so definitely technological progress makes a very big impact on a production process the second determinant the second thing which influences the production that is input prices what do the inputs we use it can be land labor capital organization when you're going to use any kind of uh, input prices so inputs what are the inputs for the inputs what you pay for the labor you will be paying wages for the land you will be paying rent and for the capital you will be paying interest if the input prices are going to increase if the input prices are increasing so definitely the cost of production is also going to increase if input prices are increasing so cost of production is going to increase if input price decreases the cost of production is going to decrease again the input prices makes a very good difference even when it comes to production process so what a being a producer what i'm expecting i'm expecting to reduce my cost that is the objective if i'm reducing my cost only in that situation i can gain more as a profit if the cost is only more so definitely the, my price is going to increase because of that most probably i'm going to lose my market share which I don't want to. Not only losing the market share, at the same time I'm going to lose my profit. So always being a producer, what we have to think is keeping price higher and keeping the cost very lesser. To keep your cost very less, you have to upgrade always with a very good technology. The second thing, you have to buy inputs where exactly the prices will be, the input prices are lesser. If the input prices are lesser, so definitely the one possible thing what's going to happen is uh, your cost of production is going to decrease. And the third one which will be a big impact, that is impact of a unit tax of a supply. Till now I'm not discussed about unit tax. So let me tell you the unit tax is nothing but the government is going to impose a tax on each single unit. It's a government tax. The government whenever any producer is going to produce any good on individual unit, individual unit, they are going to impose a tax. So that tax is called unit tax. Government is going to impose a tax on individual unit whatever you are going to produce, how many goods you are producing, on that individually they are going to impose a tax. That's called unit tax. For an example, you are producing 10 units of goods. And each unit is having 2 rupees of tax. 10 units you are producing. 10 units price is 10 rupees. So that means 10 into 10 which will be 
hundred and two rupees per unit tax. That means two rupees. And how many units you are producing? Ten, which will be twenty. The finally the price will be the cost of production of after imposing the tax. It will be one twenty rupees. To produce this, you you have to bear hundred rupees. You are spending hundred rupees. Each unit, you each unit tax is carried by two rupees and ten units you are producing. The total tax for ten units is twenty rupees. The finally it is coming to one twenty. So this is the determinants of firm's supply curve. The three things which you have to understand and explain here. The first determinant, technological progress, how it will be impactful on the production. Input prices and the third one is impact of unit price. So hope you got this. Thank you so much. I'll be continue with the market supply curve. Thank you.